Hello all, Dwight here with another Refuge Daily. And you know, I was just thinking about Thanksgiving. We just got done with Thanksgiving. Hope you guys had a blessed time. But uh, how many of us have overeaten on Thanksgiving? You know, you just stuffed yourself and you, you'd wish that uh, you could just loosen that belt buckle so you could get one more piece of pie or take that afternoon nap and then wake up and have little turkey sandwiches on those little rolls. Yeah, that would be great. Did, did you know that's biblical? You know, in the book of uh, Leviticus, uh, God has instructed Moses on how he would be worshipped. And one of the sacrifices was the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And he, he said this, he says in Leviticus 22, 29 and 30, he says, when you offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving to the Lord, offer it of your own free will. On the same day, it shall be eaten. You shall not leave you shall leave none of it until morning. I am the Lord. You know, God wanted us to offer thanksgiving freely, not out of compulsion. If someone uh, <clears throat> who gives because they have to, they're not truly thankful. People who are moved by God become thankful. And people who are moved by manipulation, well, they become uh, bitter. And uh, we don't want our, our offerings of thanksgiving to be bitter, right? Um, but also God wants to share a meal with us. How great is that to share a meal with someone that you love, your family, the food that nourishes me, nourishes you, the, the drink that, that uh, quenches your thirst, quenches my thirst. And we have fellowship. We have fellowship over in and around and through what the Lord has done for us, Lord. We don't allow arguing. We don't allow bickering. We fellowship, right? And um, we talk about our friendship and our Lord and our salvation. But why does God say it all has to be eaten in one day? No leftovers, Lord? Well, I have three reasons that I was thinking about. The first one is, in a, in a physical sense, it was so the food wouldn't spoil, become stale and lose its uh, fresh flavor. In a spiritual sense, our thankfulness can spoil as well. It becomes stale and unflavorful. Um, you remember in Luke 17 when Jesus cleansed the 10 lepers? He cleansed them all and he sent them to the priest, but only one person returned to thank the Lord and the rest went their own way. Maybe they wanted to. Maybe they wanted to show their family though, or maybe they wanted, they just needed to get back to work. Or maybe they were begin to think, well, I just, it really was me. I got myself in the right position, in the right place. So when Jesus walked by, he would do what I asked. But Jesus says, were there not 10 cleansed? But where are the nine? Were, they, were not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he says, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. When we do not thank the Lord daily, we can begin to rationalize how we planned it, right? But um, instead of just thanking God for meeting us where we are. In order for our thankfulness to be fresh, we need to offer it daily, though. Um, the second reason is that we would be satiated not just after Thanksgiving dinner when we're so full we can barely stand up so too God wants us to leave him with a full belly deeply satisfied fully satisfied completely satisfied in him full of the awareness of his presence Hebrews 13 says therefore by him, let us continually offer, offer the sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. It's interesting that he had to spell it out, what thankfulness was. It's the fruit of our lips, giving praise to his, thanks to his name. God wants us to be thankful, not because he needs to be thanked, but because we need to be thankful. He deserves our thanks. Um, The other thing is that um, uh, the third reason is the reason to be thankful is so that we do not procrastinate, right? We don't put off being thankful. Uh, you remember when the nation of Israel was wandering in the wilderness, God brought them manna, bread from heaven to eat every day, but they had to gather it every day, leftovers spoiled immediately. So we too must uh, come to the bread of life daily to give thanks for his love. 
You know, Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means house of bread. So the bread of life came from the house of bread and he nurses all of our needs, right? He brings life to us. He is the bread of life and we need to give thanks daily. Uh, today, I want you to partake of him fully, completely, leave with a full belly, thank him this Thanksgiving for his love for you, right? Um, I just wanted to leave you with this. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Be The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. They took to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So this year, today, and every day, be thankful of all the Lord has done in your life. Be thankful that he's brought you through the trials that he's brought you through. And you know what that does? That now leads us to believe that he will take us through the next trial and the next trial because life is trials, right? Uh, if we look at our problems, those begin to get magnified until they're mountains. But if we look to Jesus and we magnify him, we glorify him, we thank him, then our, prob our problems decrease as he increases. So give praise to the Lord, be thankful to the Lord. This has been Dwight with another Refuge Daily. Be well and be blessed in Jesus' name, amen.